Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning in to another of Autism Hangout's special report. And you're going to like the one today because it's going to be all about attitude. And actually, Autism Hangout, we have one of the authors of, that wrote the book on the thing about attitude. It is called It's All About Attitude. And folks, I'd like to introduce you to Gail Noble. Gail, welcome to Autism Hangout. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, I read this book on an airplane flying from Minneapolis to San Diego when we took Nolan out to visit uh, some of his favorite things, the zoo. But you know what? We had to have a great attitude in order to get on the airplane with him because Nolan, he's an Aspie. He's got lots of sensory issues, and one of them is noise, another one is smells. And if we didn't have the right attitude, I know that the trip wouldn't have happened. And as I was reading your book, the story of you and your son Kyle and your co-writer, and her name is Kathy Almeida, and her son Mark, I was touched not only by your great attitudes, but this to some degree actually became a love story as to how the two of you formed this relationship exchanged information over the extended period of time that you did and then put your remarkable findings down in a book but I'm getting ahead of myself here I'd like to have you tell me a little bit more of this story and in fact let's just start with how did you first meet Kathy and then get the idea for doing a book about attitude well uh, Kathy and I were both homeschooling our sons at the time using the sunrise program and um, we went back east for an intensive training that helps parents become more effective with their children. And I connected with her at that week-long training program. She and her husband were there. And we kind of became immediate friends at that time. And then both went home. And as is usually the case, you're all fired up with what you learned and excited and enthusiastic and your attitude's great. And that lasts for about a week. And then you're kind of back where you started from a lot of times. And so I gave her a call and um, kind of reached out for support, and we found that we were both very much um, in need of supporting each other and connected with each other, and that became the first phone call of many in, well, it's been 18 years now, mm -hmm. of every two week phone calls. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have email and the internet at that time, so that was really our only connection point. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I've noted just in a couple of brief conversations with you over Skype is your attitude is one of acceptance, you're a calm person, you seem to be a layback person. How did you go about starting to develop the right attitude in yourself before you started to apply your attitude to your son and your son's surroundings? You know, it's really a process, I have to say, and I don't know that I'm there yet. But I'm I'm somewhere there along the along the journey. I guess it was very early on when we began working with him. That was actually part of the philosophy that we were taught of being accepting and letting go of some of our judgments and the things that we believe that were holding us back mm -hmm. from really loving our kids fully and being there for them in that way. And so early on, I kind of learned. Um, I knew that that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be more accepting and less in less struggle. And I guess knowing that that was just always kind of the direction I headed in, whether or not I stayed on track. Certainly you don't stay on track the whole time, but if you kind of set that as your sight and your goal, um, you can move along that path, and I think it's a, just a much happier way to live. Most people, when they get the diagnosis, uh, your child has autism, go through various stages of denial or frustration, but anger usually comes out. How do you coach people on dealing with anger if that seems to be one of their issues? Well, you know, there, there is that, and I think that's sort of part of the process that you do go through, um, a normal part. So I think the problem lies is when you kind of get stuck in that anger stage. And the problem with anger is that maybe you feel that it's justified um, the universe or whatever failed you because you didn't get the child you deserved or expected or wanted. Um, but what happens is if you get stuck in the anger mode, it pretty much eats you up from the inside out and you can't be there for your child fully. And you have a miserable life until you fix this situation, which isn't really fixable. Um, 
I guess it, I, what I what I say to people is the sooner they can move away from that and move toward um, being more accepting and more peaceful, the happier they're going to be and the better they're going to be for their child. Mm -hmm. If you were to offer three pieces of advice regarding attitude to somebody, um, what might those three piece of, pieces of advice be? Well, definitely the first is always gratitude. I think attitude and gratitude are, they're almost about one and the same in, in that respect. Um, really finding ways to be grateful for your child and the gift that he is to you. And yes, your child with autism is a gift because he teaches you all the ways of being a better human being on a daily basis. So there's lots of lessons to be learned. And sort of going along with that is um, acceptance. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean that you roll over and you never try to help your child be the best that he can be, but it kind of takes you out of fighting mode when you say, you know what, this is the child I got, mm -hmm. um, and I accept this, and I accept my child. Um, it's a much better, uh, happier way to be with your child in accepting mode rather than fighting mode. Um, acceptance also just means that you're not constantly focused on the fix factor, the mm -hmm. cure factor. And I guess the third one would be taking care of yourself. I think as parents, we kind of put ourselves on the back burner in terms of what our needs are and if we don't fill our well it, you know we're just not going to make it for this is really more of a marathon than a sprint so I think we have to take care of ourselves and nourish ourselves along the way do things for ourselves take breaks do some things we enjoy get away from our children um, you know it's, it's a long haul I've been doing this for 25 years and if I didn't take care of me, I'm not sure where I would be. So taking now, care of you is very important. Now, both you and Kathy are, are still in your marriages, and you seem to have prospered through your marriages. So what sort of advice would you offer as it relates to how you care for your spouse? Well, I guess the first thing would be just don't forget about your spouse. <laughs> Because um, it's so easy to do when you have children, even any child, when the, a child comes into your life, all of a sudden your spouse becomes in second place or in third place. And then when autism comes into your life, it pretty much has the ability to consume you if you allow it to. And I think maintaining that relationship with your spouse and remembering why you came together in the first place is really, really important. Your book is an inspiration. It's a little bit like a chicken soup for the souls. It relates to folks that have kids on the spectrum and in, in monitoring their attitudes. In fact, do you have another book on the horizon at this point? I do. I just about have another book completed, and in some ways it's a little bit similar to this one. Of course, it's a few years later, so I've got more wisdom now. Um, but it has a little bit of a different twist, so that's going to be a surprise. I'm not going to share that just yet. <laughs> okay. Keep us wondering. Okay, Gail, how can people find out more information about you and your book? Well, we've got our website, which is autismwithattitude.com, and all the information about the book is on there. Um, you can purchase books on there. We have a written blog that we update regularly. Uh, there's a newsletter sign up. Our first newsletter is going to be out anytime now, so that's a, a, an option as well. And it's just a place to go to kind of find out more information. There's some excerpts from the book on there as well. Okay. Well, Gail, thank you for joining us here on Autism Hangout. Your, your book is an inspiration. As I said, it's a very warm, gentle read, but having had a child on the spectrum, I can confirm so many of your findings. And I would encourage viewers, if you're stuck in the anger mode, if you're looking for a way to get a better attitude as to how to thrive with autism, this is a wonderful book. Again, it's called It's All About Attitude. It is published by Desert Beach Publications. And the website, in order for you to buy it, will be listed at the end of this program. So, Gail, thank you again for joining us today. And thank you for having me. And thank you, Autism Hangout listeners, for tuning in. Watch. We'll be back again soon with another special report.